So I spent a month with the ASUS ROG Flow Z13. Normally on my channel, I do an unboxing, a dedicated review, and then I get into my one month thoughts and review. However, I have been really avoiding reviewing this laptop for a number of reasons, and we're gonna dive into those throughout this video. Now, if you watch my unboxing, you'll know that I really liked this device, and it has all the key indicators of a piece of technology that is pushing the industry forward. You took a lot of performance and put it into a very thin and light form factor device. It has great build quality, it has great choices of the screen with great brightness, and we'll get into that later in the video. But it left me with a lot to be wanting as a creative professional, and that's who this channel is for. Now, if you want a full, in-depth, extremely technical gamer review, I would definitely check out Jared's Tech, and I'll link that up at the end of this video. But I'm gonna approach this from the needs of a creative professional, and how I think this device misses the mark and hits the mark. All right, so let's dive right in. The model that I have is the top of the line i9-12900H with the RTX 3050 Ti, one terabyte of storage, and 16 gigs of RAM. Now, first off, right off the bat, I wish that we had 32 gigs of RAM on a device of this price point, and since it has other components that are of a higher skew, so you have an i9, you have an RTX 3050 Ti. You know, these are things that have good performance, and I feel like 16 gigs of RAM for a creative professional is slightly bottlenecking this device. Now, now, I know that this is a gaming tablet, like I understand that, but this channel is for creative professionals, so I come at everything from that mindset. Now, as we look towards the battery that this laptop holds, it has a 56 watt hour battery. And matched with the i9-12900H, that was just a very poor decision in my personal opinion. I think this laptop would have been far better suited with a Ryzen 9 6900HS, which provides far better power consumption. The 12900H is just very poor in efficiency. As you can see, the results coming up on the screen now, it didn't even hit seven hours of battery life on the past mark productivity test. Now compared to the latest Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G14, which I have been launching reviews on recently, that is half of the battery life. And to me, that is just unacceptable on a device that is supposed to be an on the go friendly device. I know that this is a thin and light form factor and has so much innovation and technology in it. And I am a huge Asus fan. If you've been watching my channel recently, I have done nothing but praise the evolution and technology that they've been doing for us in the industry. I really, really value and appreciate their devices. However, for me as a creative professional, being able to be on the go with my workflow, that rhymed, I think that this is a bottleneck in the user experience. I think they could have made a better decision with a Ryzen processor. Now, I know when we talk about processors and whether they should have chose Intel or Ryzen, there's a lot of decisions that have to go into that decision-making process. And so I can't just tritely say, oh, hey, Asus, you should have used Ryzen when they've chosen Intel. There's a specific reason that they did so, and I'll do more digging on that to hopefully find out so we can come back and understand the decision-making process behind some of these brands. Now, one area not to be left wanting was the screen. They did a fantastic job choosing the screen on this laptop. At 530 nits at full brightness and at over 300 nits at half brightness and a fantastic color gamut range, color accuracy, this screen is great. So as far as creative professionals are concerned, if you wanna pick up this device for say Photoshop work or graphic design work and you wanna have great color accuracy, great touch sensitivity, great brightness in outdoor settings, though you should be bringing your charger along with you as we just saw with the battery life results, this is a fantastic on-the-go device for that specific context. I love the keyboard on this laptop. Not a laptop, tablet. I love the keyboard on this tablet. The trackpad is great for the small form factor. However, truly, I wish it was a little bit bigger. I kind of wish that though this is a 13 by 10 aspect ratio screen, it might have been a slight bit taller to have a slightly larger trackpad if we're talking about the application of Creative Professional, which I am. And so this is just a device that has a lot going for it, but missed the mark in a few key areas, like I mentioned with the battery life. Now, a couple things I want to do so we don't miss out on some of the classic review elements that I always include in my full reviews. I'm gonna give you a sample of the audio coming out of the speakers, the webcam and the forward facing camera, as well as me typing on the keyboard and using the trackpad. So we're gonna just kind of batch all that in to make sure it makes it into this review.
This is a sample of the webcam on the Z13 and a little bit of audio for you as well. Here's the rear facing camera. Just doing a little fake B-roll of the Pro Art Studio Book. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability and maybe some of the different SKUs of this model, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do make a purchase with that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, let's move forward into the performance section. And I know we're kind of jumping right to that, but I really want to discuss that uh, before we get too long-winded in this initial section. Okay, now first and foremost, this laptop looks great in simulated benchmarks. It hits all of the top of the charts with Cinebench R20, R23, Geekbench single core and Geekbench multi core. It nails it all. And that's why I think they made a great pick with the i9-12900H in regards to gaming performance, because this laptop can also be complemented with an RTX 3080 external GPU, the XG Mobile. And so for gamers, this makes a ton of sense. You have a nice light on the go package, so you can even be doing your work for school. It has about six and a half hours of battery life for productivity tasks. So, you know, that'll last you almost all day of classes. Maybe on your lunch break, you plug it in and you get you know a full battery charge and go back to your classes again so it makes sense for gamers and then you get back to your room and you start gaming and has great performance so i love the concept however if you're going to be using this strictly as a creative professional on the go without the external gpu let's check out some of these results. Now, as we get into 3D modeling, you can see we're sitting on the lower end of my chart. Being that this price point would get you the higher tier G14 with the RX 6800S, I just can't justify this on the go package for this price if you're concerned with performance alone. Now, if you really like this form factor and you really like this build quality, then this makes sense for you. But if you're going for performance, I would steer you towards another ASUS product, the G14. Small, 14 by 10 aspect ratio screen, fantastic performance, and still amazing build quality. So that's where we're looking at right now here for creative professionals. All of these 3D modeling charts are going to be on the lower end. And to me, at around $1,900, it just doesn't make sense for the price. Now, what I would probably do personally, if I were gonna spend this type of money and get this type of performance, I would go for something a lot more budget friendly like an Asus Tough gaming laptop and then buy like an iPad or some sort of Android tablet device, right? So you could have both great on-the-go friendliness, great battery life for your school projects, and then you go back to your room and you have a budget-friendly gaming laptop that would get this same performance. You're gonna spend about the exact same money, but get a better overall all experience. Okay, I think that this tablet is setting the precedent for future devices. But do I think this tablet personally right now fits the needs of creative professionals? I would not put my money in it personally. There are other great Asus products that make more sense than this laptop from my use case. And I'm really emphasizing my use case because that is very different from a gamer who could have such great performance with this product. All right, let's move forward to some more practical uh, benchmarks. Let's look at the Puget After Effects benchmark. Now, as you can see here, we hit about the middle of the chart. So honestly, as an After Effects device, because of the 12900H, we are seeing great performance, which is up near the top end of other benchmarks that we're seeing. It's just below the G14, so it's great performance there. And so this would make a great After Effects device. However, when I think about the usability of on the go, the battery life is something that concerns me. But if you're somebody who's not too concerned about that and you want this kind of thin package, but then I think if you want this thin package, in my opinion, you're going to want to be on the go. And this is why I've been struggling to put this review out because I have these like emotional and mental struggles in my head of like, wow, it still has great performance and it's so thin and light. But then I think, but where's the battery life? That's something that really makes thin and light valuable. Now you see why I've like, this review is going to be way longer than it needs to because I'm just so torn inside. Now, looking at the Photoshop results, again, because of the Intel i9-12900H, this is a great Photoshop laptop. And you can get a pen to come along with this laptop. Oh my gosh, it's not a laptop, it's a tablet. You can get a pen to come along with this tablet and get way better performance, get full performance in a tablet form factor than you could ever get on an iPad. And it comes with Windows 11. And so you're not just getting a tablet user interface, you're getting a full, computing device inside of a tablet sized device. So that is really, really cool. And this Photoshop score is fantastic. A 950 roughly on the Photoshop benchmarks. This thing packs a massive punch and would really be great for Photoshop. However, again, 
Charger needs to come along with you in my personal opinion. Okay, now let's get into some video editing benchmarks here. This is one area that I thought did well. Um, you could edit 4K video while you're plugged into the charger and have zero dropped frames. And I think that's really good. However, if you went to 6K B-RAW, you'd have around 4,000 drop frames. And if you went into a red footage, you'd have about 7,000 drop frames. This would make a good video editing device from a performance standpoint while plugged into the charger. Um, and then even the export times, the export times were good. They weren't necessarily amazing. And that really came into how they are allowing the thermals to be regulated in this laptop. Now that will get to me to the next point here in this video. And that's talking about the thermals, which are probably one of my favorite elements of this laptop because it is a thin and light on the go device. And all of the components were put in with the screen, I was really concerned that this would be super heaty. And in my opinion, this is why they went with Intel over Ryzen. So here's kind of the full circle picture. Intel has done historically a much better job of cooling their components inside of a device. While doing a 4K export out of Premiere Pro, we saw stellar thermal results. I never saw above 62 degrees Celsius out of this device. That is fantastic. And on top of that, I never saw above 43 decibels of fan noise out of this device. So it runs cool, it runs quiet, and it has great export times. And so again, like I said, I love the device for where Asus is pushing the industry. I love the device for the decisions they made that were good. However, there's a number of decisions that were made that contradicted themselves. You chose Intel, in my opinion, because it had great thermal temperatures and the ability to regulate the thermals while having also good fan noise and great performance. However, you're sacrificing battery life because as we've seen, the Ryzen 9 6900HS processor does much better with efficiency of power. Again, I think you're seeing how I struggled so much to put this review of this device out on my channel. I need to take a drink of tea. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I would not personally buy this device. To me, it doesn't check enough boxes at the price point to make sense. It is on the go friendly from a form factor standpoint, but it is not necessarily on the go friendly from a battery life standpoint. Does it have the performance you need as a creative professional? In regards to video editing, Photoshop and After Effects, yes. In regards to 3D modeling without the external GPU, no. So there's just this, this gap in what I want out of this device and what this device provides me. It doesn't check enough boxes, as I just said. I think this device tried to do both, and for creative professionals, I think it just barely missed the mark. And I have great anticipation and hope that ASUS is gonna improve upon this and give us something fantastic in a future iteration. But right now, as creative professionals, it would not be my top recommendation. And it kills me to say that because I'm a huge advocate of seeing ASUS push the industry forward. So I hate to do somewhat of what would be considered maybe a negative review at the risk of seeing them take less risk. I don't want to see them taking less risk. I wanna to continue to see them do this because they've had so many big wins in these past couple of years that you know sometimes it just misses the mark for a specific segment of people. Didn't mean it necessarily missed the mark for gamers. I think this device could be a really great fit for a lot of different people wanting to have a laptop for their student work and for gaming. Okay, before I go on and on and on, because I feel like I will continue to, links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.